first of all, get used to me calling you Marcus Erickson. That's going to happen a hundred times. So, Marcus Armstrong, first day in school, basically, yesterday, yeah. ended P10. Uh, you don't have a lot of experience in these cars, the IndyCar side, but you have a lot of open wheel experience. Your performance yesterday suggested you're not going to be total garbage. Uh, are you in agreement? Not in agreement. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, like, I do have a lot of experience in, in a single seater, that's for sure. And compared to what I'm used to in Formula 2, it's sort of the same philosophy. Uh, there's a few things that I prefer about this car, for sure. Um, it's quite natural. The way it moves is very Ooh. natural. You can feel it sliding before it slides, if that makes sense, which is really nice. And um, I think generally it was a good day, just to sort of get back into the rhythm, get to know all my engineers a bit better and, and how their procedures are. And um, I thought it went really well, and uh, there's potential to do, to do uh, a good job today, certainly. I love your note about being able to feel the car and talking to you this early. That's a really good indicator, yeah? I mean, and again, compared to the F2 car, what is it about this that makes sense so far? It seems like the tire can accept you to slide mm. a lot, which is something quite unique. If you come from Europe, you are literally taught not to slide. So, uh, is certainly... it cool to be free now to actually get a little more aggressive with the car? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think all of us have that, you know, need for speed. Hey, look at that. Or need for sliding, let's say. Um, and now you can actually do it, or I can actually do it in this car. But ultimately, I'm just enjoying it. Like, it's just fun to drive. The track as well is actually really cool. This last sector is very flowing, very smooth. Maybe not completely representative to what we'll have on the season, but I mean, I'm enjoying it, so I'm not complaining. Did a press conference yesterday sitting next to arguably one of the worst human beings I've ever met, Callum Eilat. <laughs> you acknowledged just spending a year living with him. Was it in Italy? Yeah. Have you sent him the bills for all the therapy you've had to go through to get your life straight again? Just a miserable human being. I think we were... We, I mean, to be fair, he wasn't always there because he would disappear okay. off to the UK. Okay. He, he obviously had a house in the UK, but... Uh, he got pissed off with me because I wasn't very tidy. And then, <laughs> and then I got pissed off with him because he would, like, leave the bathroom in a mess. You know, simple, stupid things. But you know what? I knew it. I knew we're, it. We're forgiving each other and we're best mates again. He was raised by wolves. This person you has no home so. training. <laughs> All right, last quick question or two. I don't know if you've been told, you probably have been told 20 times about this Indianapolis 500 related superstition of green cars and how green cars are unlucky. Oh, really? Yes. Your team, of course, has said, well, we're going to spit in the face of such concerns. We're going 1,000% green. There is some black on there, but one of the more unique liveries I've seen so far in the field. Give me your thoughts about the uh, your green hot rod. Yeah, we'll be using the green um, Ridgeline livery for select races this year. Not, not all of them, um, but genuinely, I think it looks fantastic. I think it's iconic, and uh, it looks good in the sunlight. Certainly, when I saw some photos when I was driving, and uh, it looks fast. Certainly, and and it stands out as well. I think I'd maybe need to get a helmet that sort of uh, matches with the car a bit better because my white and red one doesn't exactly <laughs> match. But I like it, and I'm not superstitious, so maybe there's only bad luck if you believe in bad luck. Ooh. As someone once told me, it, it's unlucky to be superstitious. That was a mind-bender yeah, when I was like I'd 15 years that. old. Yeah. Uh, last very quick thing for you. So, I know we're only one day into the official activities for you here in IndyCar, but there's a bit of a leap of faith of you, right? It's not like you'd come and done a bunch of races here and decided to stay. You made a big life decision in the off-season to come here. You liking what you have, getting to meet all the teams and drivers and whatnot, being a part of this community? Absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't think of it as a leap of faith hmm. because, I mean, in any I was going to have the armed security here yank you if you said no. By the way, so that's a good call <laughs> on your part. In any case, I like to take big swings, and this sort of 
offers me the opportunity to to really challenge myself uh, from a sporting side, um, but also f- just from a personal side. I mean, working with Chip Ganassi Racing, it's a it's a dream come true. Not so bad. And also working alongside Scott, who's been immensely helpful to me, certainly yesterday, but also before. I mean, I'm a fan of the sport. I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's stories, all my engineers' stories. My teammates have, have a lot of war stories. We can compare. I've already got to know Marcus, the other Marcus, a yes. little bit. And uh, he's a good bloke, Alex, as well. So it's uh, it's such a cool team and great chemistry. I think I've been told internally they refer to, between the Marcuses, Tall Swede. And you're not a short Kiwi, but I've heard Tall Swede and Short Kiwi. So is that, does that fly? Is that okay? That was literally like labeled on the seating the seating yes. arrangements in the engineering office <laughs> short kiwi and tall sweet i was like ah. dude i'm not that short am i all right hey yeah we have no complexes here whatsoever all right mark armstrong glad you're here brother uh let's get into day two let's do it all right